Hi everyone. Through this class, we are going to study about dissociation energy and various ways of calculating the dissociation energy. This figure A and figure B shows two of the ways in which electronic excitation can lead to dissociation. In this figure A, the equilibrium Internuclear separation of this higher electronic energy level is greater than that of the lower electronic energy level. And this uh, dashed line, this indicate the dissociation limit of lower electronic energy level and this dash level that indicate the dissociation limit of upper electronic energy level. This energy level is the first vibrational energy level of lower electronic energy level that means v double dash equal to zero here it is v dash equal to zero for dissociation d zero double dash energy is needed from this v double dash equal to zero and for dissociation in upper electronic energy level energy needed from this v dash equal to zero level is d zero dash and we can see that the total energy of dissociation products or atoms from this upper state is greater by an amount which is equal to EEX. And this energy is the excitation energy of one or rarely both of the atoms produced on dissociation. We have already studied that if there is an electronic transition like this, where the molecule jump to a level above this uh, dissociation limit, then spectrum of the system consists of some vibrational transitions followed by a continuum. The lower wave number limit of this continuum must represent just sufficient energy to cause the dissociation. That is, the dissociation products separate with virtually zero kinetic energy. Thus, we have new bar of that starting point of continuum that is equal to d0 double dash plus e excitation and the unit will be in centimeter raised to minus 1. We can measure d0 double dash the dissociation energy if we know excitation energy eex. There are several ways in which total energy d0 double dash plus eex we can calculate. First method is thermochemical studies. The study often led to the approximate value of D0 double dash. From spectroscopical studies, we can calculate the actual value of D0 double dash plus EEX. Substituting the approximate value of D0 double dash, in this, we get a rough value of EEX. When the spectrum of atomic products is studied, usually one of the excitation energy will be close to this rough value of EEX. That will be the actual value of EEX. Substituting this real value of EEX, then we can measure D0 double dash. The second case is for more than one spectroscopic dissociation limit corresponding to dissociation into two or more different states of products with the different excitation energies, the separation between the excitation energies are often found close with the separations between only one set of excited states of atoms observed spectroscopically. The nature of the excited products and their energies we can find immediately. In this figure, the upper electronic energy state is unstable. There is no minimum energy in the energy curve. As soon as a molecule is raised from lower energy level to upper energy level, by excitation, the molecule dissociates into products with a total excitation energy EEX. The products fly apart with the kinetic energy E kinetic. Since E kinetic is not condensed, the whole spectrum for this system will exhibit a continuum. The lower limit of the continuum, if observable, will precisely the energy 
equal to d0 double dash plus e e x. As before, if e e x can be found from the knowledge of dissociation products, d0 double dash can be measured with great accuracy. But no continua appears in many electronic spectra. In such case, we can calculate the dissociation energy by noting the vibrational line convergence. We have already studied that the vibrational energy levels possible are given by epsilon v equal to v plus 1 by 2 into nu bar e minus v plus half the whole square into x e into nu bar e. So, change in vibrational energy delta epsilon v is delta epsilon v plus 1 minus delta epsilon v that is equal to v plus 3 by 2 into nu bar e minus v plus 3 by 2 the whole square into x c into nu bar e minus v plus 1 by 2 nu bar e minus v plus 1 by 2 the whole square x c into nu bar e that is equal to nu bar e into 1 minus 2 x c into v plus 1. The separation Separation between two adjacent vibrational levels decreases linearly with increasing V and when the dissociation energy limit is reached, it is equal to zero. V value corresponding to this maximum possible V, we take it as V max. Therefore, the right hand side of the equation equal to zero. So, nu bar e into 1 minus 2x e into v max plus 1 is equal to 0 or v max equal to 1 by 2xc. We know that the anharmonicity constant xc is of the order of 10 raised to minus 2. Therefore, v max in this case is about 50. Thus, as an example, we can consider HCl. Nu bar e for HCl is 2990 centimeter raised to minus 1. And its anharmonicity constant is 0 0.0174. Vmax we can calculate using the equation Vmax equal to 1 by 2xc. It is equal to 27.74. So we can take V as the next lowest integer. So in this case V is 27. Substituting these values in the equation of epsilon V. It is found that it is equal to 42,890 cm raised to minus 1 or it is 513 kilojoules per mole. But more accurate value of epsilon V evaluated thermochemically is 427.2 kilojoule per mole. The discrepancy between these two are due to two reasons. First one, the infrared data only allow us to consider two or three vibrational transitions. They are the fundamental plus the first and second overtones. The electronic spectrum shows many more vibrational lines and we shall get a better value of D0 double dash if we make use of these extra data. Second one, for calculating epsilon v at higher v value, we have to consider cubic, even quadratic terms, etc. in the expression of epsilon v. Both of these points may be met if we plot the separation between vibrational transitions delta epsilon as observed in electronic spectrum against the vibrational quantum number v. Initially, delta epsilon equal to nu bar into 1 minus 2x into v plus 1 will apply quite accurately and the graph will be a straight line which may be extrapolated either to find v max or dissociation energy. Dissociation energy is simply the sum of all the increments delta epsilon from v equal to 0 to v equal to v max. The area under the delta epsilon versus V graph gives this energy directly. Such a linear extrapolation was first suggested by Birge and Sponer and is known as Birge-Sponer extrapolation. 
the most accurate determination of dissociation energy is obtained by extrapolating the smooth curve and finding the area beneath it. Figure shows this process of data on iodine vapor given by R. D. Verma. The molecules in excited states usually come back to the ground state within a fraction of microsecond. So, the dissociation energy in the ground state can be found easily if the dissociation products and their excitation energies are known. We can calculate the excitation energy from atomic spectroscopy and dissociation energy from Birgay's Bonner extrapolation. Then we can measure the energy of the zero zero transition, that is, the lower vibrational level zero to upper vibrational level transition, either directly or by using the equation d zero dash plus excitation energy equal to energy of zero zero excitation plus d zero dash or d zero dash equal to energy of zero zero excitation plus d zero dash minus excitation energy.